you will have noticed, perhaps, that there are two cases, short run type 2 and long run type D, where the supply curve looks the way I've drawn it in the middle part of the screen. In other words, the supply curve has a gap. The precise explanation of why there's this gap differs from the short run to the long run. Suppose you let p hat denote the price at which the gap occurs. Look first on the lower left. In the lower left, I've, dis I've graphed profit versus quantity in the short run when p equals p hat. And what you see there is that here's the, the, the profit line with for p hat. The firm is indifferent between producing here and producing at zero because it makes equal profit both places. It doesn't want to produce anywhere else. Producing here would be a mistake because that would generate this profit, which is lower than the profit you can get by being at either at zero or at this point. So at a price of p hat, the firm wants to be here or here but not anywhere in between. In between would be a point like this question mark point, and the firm doesn't want to be there. Similarly, let me get that back. Let's talk about in the long run. So I've drawn that in the lower right. So in the long run, when p equals p hat, at exactly that price, the profit function looks like the way I've, I've drawn it here. So pi for p hat is 4. And so the firm is indifferent between producing here and here. It definitely doesn't want to go into an in-between spot because that would give it this kind of profit which is lower. So it's happy here, it's happy at that quantity, it's not happy anywhere else. So again, in the long run, at a price of p hat, the firm is happy to be here and it's happy to be here. It doesn't want to be in between those two places. So that's why What's joining this point and this point is a dashed line. It's not a solid line. The firm doesn't want to be there. That's not a legitimate place to produce. That p hat, the firm will either produce at this quantity or it'll produce at this quantity. It won't produce anywhere else. I want to draw out an implication for this, which I've never seen any intermediate micro textbook draw out. If you have a supply curve like this, which we've seen is certainly understandable, both in short run type 2 and in long run type D, you have this kind of supply curve. What happens if your demand curve looks like this? Now, we haven't studied explicitly supply and demand, but all of you have taken principles, and you know that market equilibrium occurs where supply equals demand. Well, what happens if the demand curve looks like this? It goes in between the gap in the supply curve. Let's try to find an equilibrium price. Our first guess at an equilibrium price is probably p, p hat. But a p hat quantity demanded is here, definitely. And quantity supplied is either here, in which case you have excess supply in the market, or here, in which case you have excess demand in the market. So p hat is not an equilibrium price. How about a, a price below p hat? Well, below p hat, quantity supplied is zero, and quantity demanded is certainly not zero. Right below p hat, you have quantity supplied here and demand over here, and so you have clearly excess demand. So below p hat won't work. How about above p hat? Well, above p hat, supply goes along that curve and demand goes along this curve, so you have excess supply. So above p hat, you have excess supply. Below p hat, you have excess demand. And at p hat, you have either excess supply if the firm decides to produce here, or you have excess demand if the firm decides to produce here. There is no equilibrium price. So what happens? <laughs> It's not that short run type 2 and long run type D can't exist, but we've drawn the supply curve receiving competition. So what happens when you got short run type 2 or long run type D is if 
demand is fairly low, if it falls in this gap, then there's no competitive equilibrium. This technology is going to have to be run by some other kind of firm that's not, or some other kind of industry that's not competitive. So competitive equilibrium is inconsistent with short run type 2 and long run type D if you have demand curves the one like the one I've drawn it. Now, if you have a different kind of demand curve like this, call it D prime, then there's no problem at all. You've got demand equal supply right here, completely standard story, no problem. So it's not that short run type 2 and long run type D are always incompatible with competitive equilibrium. That's not true. But if the demand curve happens to fall in the gap, then it's incompatible. If the demand curve doesn't fall in the gap, then there's no problem. Uh, and uh, you have a price that's above p hat, and you get equilibrium. Similarly, if demand is really low, like down here, call it d double prime, then you have a perfectly good equilibrium where quantity is equal to zero. So you can have equilibrium in this case, but you're not guaranteed equilibrium. And in graduate school, when I'm when I'm teaching the PhD level micro, we get around this by essentially never considering these these cases: uh, short run type two and long run type D. And so we pretend like those cases don't exist with competition, and then we don't have to worry about this. But the cases can exist, and they would be inconsistent with the existence of a competitive equilibrium.